Hello and welcome to another edition of It's About Money. I'm Nanette Nokon and thank you for joining us. Today we've got an exciting topic to talk about. It actually began my interest in talking about identity fraud. So I contacted the FBI and to find out that identity fraud is actually a small slice of what's called the cyber crime. So today we're fortunate to have special agent in charge, Mr. Peter Ahern, at our program. So welcome to our show, Peter. Thank you for having me. You know, I have to tell you that when I told my friends, colleagues, and, um, and family that I was having a, an FBI agent in the show, the question was like, really? An FBI agent? <laughs> it seems like the FBI agents are so far away. You just see them in movies and there, uh, There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of mystique associated with uh, the position. And sometimes that, that is very good. Sometimes it's not good. But uh, this dispels some of it, and I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thank so. you very much. Sure. Now, um, let's talk about uh, some of the financial and investment crimes that are out there. You know, how does the FBI get involved, and what gives the FBI the author authority to get involved? Well, the, the jurors jurisdictional uh, uh, authority comes from Congress, basically, and, and the FBI has uh, uh, authority to investigate uh, a myriad of what you would call financial or what we would call white-collar crimes based on authority given us to uh, Congress through uh, Title uh, 18 of the United States Code, which uh, ties in a lot of the interstate nexus that you need for these type of violations, and most frauds we'll see somehow affects what we call interstate commerce. Um, uh, so legally, that, that gives us the authority to go in, and certain crimes are solely federal uh, when you talk financial institutions. Uh, bank fraud, for example, uh, uh, is, a, is an FBI violation because the banks are insured by the federal government, so Congress gives us the jurisdiction. That's, a, that's an example uh, uh, on how we get our jurisdiction. I see. No, um, is the FBI part of the U.S. Treasury? Is that right? No, no. no the, it's not. the the FBI is part of the uh, United States Department of Justice. Oh, justice. Um, okay. The uh, when you look at how we work, if you watch the, the TV show Law and Order, mm -hmm. we are the investigative arm of the government, and then the prosecutive arm would be the United States attorneys uh, that uh, work for directly for the Department of Justice. But the FBI is part of the Department of Justice. Uh, the other Department of Justice entities are the uh, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms. Uh, it is the FBI, the U.S. Marshal Service, the Bureau of Prisons from nice. the standpoint of law enforcement. Got it. Uh, the Treasury Department has uh, no longer has an investigative arm. They have moved uh, U.S. Customs, uh, the Secret Service, uh, into Department of Homeland Security, which is a whole new entity, as everyone would know. So that's how it kind of shapes up. Got it. The old days, it was Treasury agents. Okay. There were Justice agents, the FBI. I and see. That's how it's structured now. I see. Well, thanks for clarifying that. It's a little bit different with Homeland Security in place. There. Yes, Homeland Security absorbed uh, in the law enforcement functions of uh, a lot of Treasury agencies. Okay. Now, what type of uh, crimes ha does it involve? In cyber crime. What type of financial and uh, investment well, fraud? Exists? Cyber is 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 hard to really define. I mean, what is cybercrime? And if you you look at, or right now, since 9-11, the FBI has restructured uh, the priorities that we have. I mean, terrorism has always been a priority for the FBI. I think Congress tries to equate priority based on how many people you have working, which isn't necessarily the right answer. However, you know, our number one mission in the FBI is to, to, vent, uh, is to prevent another terrorist attack. In terrorism, we see financial issues, mm -hmm. obviously, money laundering, um, uh, financial support to terrorism overseas. So you have a financial issue there. Mm -hmm. But in the priorities, you have the priority of terrorism is our number one priority. Our second priority is foreign counterintelligence, which we also see a financial nexus to. That's to protect our national assets, okay. you know, the critical things to this country. The third priority is what we call cybercrime. Okay. And when we restructured, you looked at the issues of what basically has the computer done in our world. I mean, it's, it's as, as, as uh, um, uh, new and adv advanced as it was when they created the telephone. And the point I make is when you create things that help us, like the telephone, mm -hmm. now the computer, you take the criminal element that you have, and now you have two items, two technological advances that facilitate the crime. And in white collar crime, financial crime, the computer has opened up a whole new world into how you deal with traditional financial crimes that we've had. So cyber is kind of everything. And our, our priority of cyber crime, the financial issues, the mm -hmm. identity theft, um, the, the embezzlements, the bank frauds. But also in cyber, you have um, uh, the use of the computer for uh, uh, child 
pornography, which is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. But the computer makes it cyber. And the way we, we pretty much define it is, if the computer is the main instrument of the crime, it becomes a cyber matter. I see. We also have the issues of, uh, of protecting uh, uh, our infrastructures, bank infrastructures, for example, the hacking, mm -hmm. the intrusion, sure. the intellectual property rights as a financial crime. So when you talk cyber, drug traffickers use the computer, uh, terrorists use the computer. So that whole issue of cyber isn't just for the financial institutions, but for uh, the sake of our discussion today, I'm sure we'll stay in that financial realm, but mm -hmm. it's a hard thing to handle, uh, is that understanding of the cyber stuff. And quite frankly, in law enforcement, uh, uh, we generally in law enforcement are way behind the curve in dealing with cyber issues, uh, as, as we'll discuss. I'm sure it's just so difficult because it's such a deep and wide, sure. wide ranging. So, mm -hmm. now who prosecutes these cases? Um, well, from the federal standpoint, it would be the United States Attorney's Office, and uh, just like law enforcement, to try to get smart in the uh, in the world of cyber mm -hmm. uh, is is a thing. I think uh, many of your viewers can probably relate to the fact that they probably have children ranging in the age of about 8 to 16, mm -hmm. they probably know more about the computer than we know. Yeah, that's I, I, I deal with it every day. Uh, sure. You know, we, the way we're structured, we have a cybercrime squad uh, uh, in, uh, in Buffalo, but we also have a cybercrime operation here in Rochester. And some of these new agents coming in that we're hiring are just amazing. Um, and, but we're, we're going after them so they can deal with the cyber issues, whether they be the financial or the kitty mm -hmm. porn or, mm -hmm. or the hacking, the intrusion, denial of service attacks that we deal with. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a priority, as I said, of the FBI, and I think it's the right thing because those are the type of crimes I think the resources of the FBI need to be focused on, and we've changed so much from doing things like, uh, you know, uh, bank robberies, we look a little differently at them, uh, stolen car rings. Uh, we're getting out of those to focus in that cyber area. I see. Now, what's, what are some examples of recent cases? I mean, do people actually call you to say you're just a lead, or how, how, do, how does the whole thing in, get started? In the financial area? Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. Uh, uh, a lot of the financial, cyber financial issues uh, are unreported. Um, and, and that's been the case ever since I, I was an agent. Uh, 1980, uh, I was asked to go to, <laughs> to a computer fraud in service down at Quantico where we learn things. Uh -huh. 1980. Wow. Um, back then, I was dealing with uh, Key Punch. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Cobol, Fortran. Yes. I mean, these are the languages where, it, it, in this day and age, you know, forget it. The the the, the way that uh, we've we have have jumped. But even back then, we were told that almost eighty percent of the of the computer fraud mm -hmm. back then it was called now the cyber crime uh, mm -hmm. is unreported huh. uh, by a lot of institutions for a variety of reasons. Uh, they don't want the publicity. Mm -hmm. uh, it could affect their financial status in the community, it could affect their Wall Street status. So a lot of it goes unreported, but normally we get a lot of the information that uh, through us through the companies, uh, the relationships, some of the outreach that we do in the FBI with some of our programs like InfraGuard, um, where we go out to companies and they join a program uh, under the umbrella of the FBI to share information on cyber issues, mm -hmm. uh, to include the financial uh, uh, institutions, uh, the banks, are mandated to report, though. There's federal regulations where they have to let us know when they're, okay. whether it be an, an embezzlement by a computer or just by somebody taking the money. So those requirements, and, and a lot of times we'll get someone that will call and they know of an abuse going on and, and, and tip us, which uh, we would call our human intelligence, which is critical to us, people talking to the FBI. I see, so it's the citizens getting involved in oh, letting the FBI know that I you know, think there's something going mm -hmm. on here. No, is there a level of financial amount that is where the FBI gets involved? I mean, probably not on something that's $10 that somebody exactly. stole from the um, cash register that, that's or been something. A, that's been a lot of discussion within the FBI, especially after 9-11. Um, you know, we, we Congress told us you need to shift your agents into the terrorism world, but they did not backfill us with other agents. We have, um, are not doing things that we would do before, like I said, but also in financial institution type uh, crimes, uh, we have what's called the declination amount, a decline that the, the U.S. Attorney's Office, the prosecutors, uh, as well as the FBI Department of Justice have said, look, we need to say that we're not going to do anything below a certain level. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, as, uh, as SACs, the special agents in charge, have discussed this with the director, and he understands that we need to have a little latitude, okay? For example, 
in New York City, they're probably not going to look at a bank fraud or a computer fraud of anything less than $100,000, if that. Hmm. Okay, the standard declination nationally, uh, the Bureau wanted us to go to 100000 We argued that, look, in a place like, um, you know, Penfield or a place like uh, Elmira, you know, a $25,000 computer fraud on a, on a bank, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. In New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, it's, hmm. it's well, that's the way either the local police have to pick up the issue or the bank has to address it civilly or the institution financial institution will have to address it civilly. So that's kind of how it is. And in, in this area, we're still kind of, let's see what we have. There could be some aggravated circumstances, uh, but with banks, um, uh, we'll, we'll probably much, pretty much stay at that $100,000 level and we're gonna have to refer it to the county or, or something like that. That's pretty much how it works. Are there any other federal agencies that get involved besides the FBI? Oh, there are, yes. Okay. And, and, and they partner up with us and they do a great job. For example, uh, the Secret Service. Um, okay. They do have and have a lot and do a lot in the area of identity theft. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it, identity theft, two issues. The old days, identity theft would be, you know, check cashing, credit card issues. Still have some of that today. Sure. Uh -huh. But as I said before, when you invent a computer, mm -hmm. and you have the internet, and you have the messaging, you have all the things that, if you're a criminal, it's open season. I mean, that's like, yeah, this is great. Now look what I can do. Sure. Uh, the counterfeiting of money, for example, with the Secret Service on computers, a big issue. But they have taken uh, uh, and, and uh, do a lot in the area of identity theft. Uh, in the cyber uh, area with financial institution stuff, they will either work with us or they'll do their own thing, and we talk, which is critical. Uh, but in their cyber requirements, they're, they're, they're limited in, in a certain area. They won't do the kiddie porn, for example. You know, we, we do, and that really takes a lot of our resources in cyber as the, uh, as the child pornography issue is huge. Mm -hmm. you know, so, but you have the Secret Service, uh, United States, well, they're now the uh, uh, BICE, the Bureau of uh, Immigration Customs Enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to be the Treasury arm that are now in Homeland Security. Okay. They do a lot with, with um, um, uh, importation of money in financial institutions. So a lot, there are a lot of areas and a lot of uh, federal agencies, and the key is the is working together and deconflicting issues so that we're not all out there doing the same thing and we'll form task forces uh, in uh, western New York here we do have the cybercrime task force mm. uh, which is uh, I know here uh, in this area I know the Greece Police Department are very active with us uh, Rochester PD the Sheriff's Department uh, are active members in dealing with these cyber issues uh, across the board uh, but again the 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 Kitty porn, the uh, uh, crimes against children is a major issue, uh, not just the images issue, but just people that are travelers, you know, enticing kids to go. Mm. It, it's, it's frightening. It's, it's amazing, it? sure. But it's great that there's uh, a government arm that oversees those things. It, it could have been worse, it could be worse, right? Yes, no, no, if I'm uh, on a micro level, um, what does it mean to me if I, as a citizen I'm on my computer? What are the things that I could potentially do that actually exposes me to be a victim of some of these crimes? Well, one of the more recent things that we're dealing with, uh, as everybody in the country and around the world knows, would be uh, the issues of uh, Katrina, the relief services. I mean, yes. that's a classic one right there. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you deal with, uh, with donating money? And it's a classic example after Katrina. We went out, we being the FBI, and, and put out a bulletin and warned people. There's certain things you don't do. And the easiest thing is, is know who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Red Cross, uh, for example, Salvation Army, they don't solicit over the computer and they know what the issues are. So when you see things like that, the antenna should go up. Uh, the things that they'll set you up, the phishing scams where they'll spam you with you know, all these things and you're curious and you open. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing, if you don't know what it is, don't open it, delete it. Got it. You know, that, that's the key thing. Right. Don't open something that you don't know what it is because the way it's set up, it will then infect your computer and it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, it's no different than telemarketers. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Sure, giving you know, out your personal data. We, we have the blocking systems now, and uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, Congress is looking at a lot of legislation on spamming, which is, is the hook. Sure. All that trash you get on your computer. But to use uh, for your internet service providers, the tools that they give you, that AOL, for example, mm -hmm. will give you, and, and Microsoft or MSN and right. Yahoo, use the tools that they give you to filter out, to filter out uh, some of that stuff. And, and there are mechanisms, too, if you get some of this stuff to refer it to, as mm -hmm. we can talk about.
No, you talk about fishing there briefly. Let's. Sure. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit more? Because maybe some of our audience may not be familiar with that. Well, That's fishing is, is is a process where you know you open your computer and you're getting all this junk mail. It's all spamming, uh, okay. you know, and and then they they use those terminologies for just to kind of pull you in the spamming, the phishing, and they're trying to get you to open things. They're trying to. Uh, to, to make you look at things that where you might invest. And, and the standard line, whether it be a computer or anything else, mm -hmm. if they're promising you thing that, things that don't look like it's normal and it's not realistic, mm -hmm. it probably isn't. Sure. Okay. Scams like that, you know, where all you get 30% back on your money, I mean, that should be a hint, mm -hmm. you know, not to do something like that. So Actually, a lot of it's common sense. It's interesting you mentioned that. I went, my husband went on the computer the other day and there was a, a spam, well, a, a pop up that came up and said, This is from uh, yeah, uh, excuse me, uh, Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. And we, we just need you to verify your account number and user ID. And it said at the bottom, and don't even attempt to email us about this because this is really something different initiative but part of Amazon. Sure. So it, it quickly it deleted that. If, but it's if amazing. If anyone is asking you for, I mean, I, believe me, I, I, I'll use the computer for things and order things and I'll put my credit card. I will. I, mm -hmm. I have no problem. The f I have faith in the system. Mm -hmm. But when they start asking for information like your social security number, right. in this day and age, you know, with the exception of the, of the banking issues with the requirements that you have to give your social security number, uh, and there are a lot more issues now that have come up financially that are required since 9-11, mm -hmm. um, but if they're asking you for social security numbers, addresses, things like that, don't even go there. Mm -hmm. Just plain and simple because nobody needs a social security number with the exception of banking institutions. Mm -hmm. And even then you can question them. What do you need it for? What are you using it for? Mm -hmm. That's a hint. When they right. ask for that type of personal information, a credit card, that's a risk you take, but if you're dealing with a legitimate company, the airlines, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a uh, national Macy's or, you know, those mm -hmm. are common sense. But if it's something you've never heard of, you know, and then there are ways, too, that you can get information to uh, the FBI on uh, if you get something on your computer uh, or you're a victim of a fraud. Um, you know, we urge people to use the computer to tell us. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, we use the uh, Inter Internet Fraud Complaint Center, which is a center uh, established by the FBI, uh, I believe it's in West Virginia, in our Criminal Justice Center down in the Clarksburg, West Virginia area. We realize that this is happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere everybody's doing this. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, well, call the FBI in Rochester, call the FBI in Buffalo, call the FBI in Chicago, it's such a big problem that they created this Internet Fraud Complaint Center. So they are the intake. Okay. They're the triage. Okay. They're looking for patterns. They're looking for, we're not going to look at every, every one. Mm -hmm. Clearly, mm -hmm. we sure. can't. Right. We don't yeah. have the resources. Have the, yeah, sure. But you need the analytical function that the Internet Fraud Complaint Center gives you, right. where they can look at this and say, oh, look what happened here in Rochester. It's also happening in Buffalo. That's happening in Ohio. That's happening. And then we put it together and say, we've got an issue here. Mm -hmm. And then that will be referred to an FBI office uh, or, or be done through the complaint center to, to try to deal with, uh, with the issue. One, one of the classics that you deal with all the time, mm -hmm. whether it be the computer or a letter, mm -hmm. the Nigerian oil company. Oh, yeah, right. I, mean, I've got, <laughs> I, I figured, let's bring it up now because everybody, oh, I got a Nigerian letter. I get calls every day from friends, relatives. Uh -huh. You know, they say, oh, Pete, I got a letter from a Nigerian. Throw it out. Just yeah. throw it out. Right, right, The right. typical thing, if this is too good to be true, sounds right. too, don't do it. Yeah. But now they've learned the computer. Sure. So now we're dealing with that issue. So we don't just have the mail issue, mm -hmm. you know. And so the, the computer uh, is a tremendous adv uh, technological advance, but it brings a lot of problems with it. Sure, because a lot of things that happen that maybe the user doesn't see is happening. Sure. That kind of gets downloaded to the system nope. and so on. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> That's really it's, it's it's amazing. Now, um, what kinds of um, things are more popular, or I guess more prop? prevalent in our community here in western New York? What kind of crimes are usually In more? the cyber in area? In the cyber area, please, yes. Jeez, it's, it's really, it's, it's hard to say. Without a doubt, without a doubt, it, it is the child, oh, uh, 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 child uh, uh, crimes against children. It's the kitty porn issue. Is, I see. Uh, but it's prevalent everywhere in the country. It's, it's kind of like the drug issue. Mm -hmm. I could put every agent in the FBI in western New York working kitty porn. Mm. 
And it's not enough. No, probably. it isn't. But in the cyber area that we see, we have had some uh, some hacking intrusion cases mm -hmm. um, in that area too of white collar and the cyber world and things of that nature. We deal with uh, intellectual property rights, which we oh. haven't even talked about. Okay. The old days when when I was a new agent, we called them copyright cases. Sure. You know? Okay. But now it's in, in uh, the uh, uh, intellectual property rights cases. Uh, we would work cases back when I first came into the FBI in the white collar program, these copyright cases, you know, uh, and now I'm dating myself by saying, you know, eight track tapes. Yeah, right. People don't remember eight track tapes. <laughs> sure. You no know, yeah. counterfeiting, pirating of those things, but it's a bigger issue now. It's very big in the cyber world with when you talk about uh, a software, mm -hmm. you know, all the computer software, the Microsoft, uh, you know, and, and we have jurisdiction in looking into intellectual property rights, but it gets to be a bigger issue. Uh, when you talk about national security, mm -hmm. which would be the intellectual property rights. We just had a case uh, recently in this area down in Corning mm -hmm. um, uh, where a company uh, were able to obtain the blueprints for you know, a sole proprietorship uh, issue, intellectual property rights of Corning on glass. Mm -hmm. Every computer, uh, every, you know, your cell phone glass, it's, it's, it's the, uh, and I'm not really into the details of the technology, but they lost that. It was taken, uh, the, the blueprints, uh, computer transmission of information Mom. that were then sold to a company that's in Taiwan. Oh my gosh. Uh, so they've lost that. But that's, that's a big issue with us in this area that we've had with intellectual property rights. We've had hacking cases at some universities hmm. that we've investigated and sure. looked into. We've had hacking cases into the utility companies hmm. that we have looked at. Um, you know, when we had the blackout, remember the blackout yes, a couple yes, years ago? Right, right, one of the right. first things, we were getting calls on uh, from our headquarters, okay, this could be a terrorism thing. Well, sure, but the first people that I had reach out in that case, I didn't give it to our task force for terrorism. I went to my cyber task force okay. because it's an infrastructure protection, I see. you know, and, and cyber and those issues. And with the financial institutions, we've had the issues of hacking into the financial institutions and stealing information, mm -hmm. social security numbers. That's what they're looking for. And you've sure. heard some of the bigger ones. Yes, uh, yeah, with the credit card you know, companies. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, but those are the things we've had just in a nutshell without getting specifically into naming companies or whatever. Sure, but of course. And so really there's individuals that are affected and there are also businesses that are affected. Oh, like the example you've... Uh, brought up from Corning Absolutely. and then of course you know banks and credit card companies and so on so really people have to be vigilant about making sure that they're protecting themselves as much as possible oh, sure. by not giving out their information in too many areas. And it, it used to be things that you worried about which you still do today about the uh, the uh, dumpster divers. Oh yeah you know, They go sure. in and yes, grab the right. stuff on identity theft. Right. You worry about you give your credit card and, and a uh, waitress in a restaurant has got a scanner. Yes and they the swipe. Technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we can't even look in those cases. The Secret Service can't look into those cases. I mean, those are things that we don't have the resources to deal with. We're so busy dealing with the more organized large-scale uh, attacks and theft of information off of computers. I see. You know, and uh, every day, though, the technology gets better. For the consumer, that's good. Mm -hmm. For law enforcement, it's more difficult. Just trying to keep up with the technology so that we can address these crimes is, is something that, uh, as I said at the beginning of this, we just don't have the resources. Uh, trying to attract the agents to come in there to do that. I mean, our mm -hmm. hiring right now, our critical skill needs are in the area of information technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hiring uh, agents. Uh, we've even waived the work experience is to right? hire uh, people that can come in and, and deal with the issues of the cyber uh, cyber crime. Absolutely. Well, that's interesting. Actually, let's talk about that for a minute because, you know, we, in an environment where jobs are hard to come by, you know, companies are downsizing, sounds like the FBI is hiring some people. <laughs> we are, but we, we, we struggle with it, though. You know, we struggle, uh, uh, and, and let me give you what the key issue is. Okay. You know, you have s s some some kid coming out of college, you know, and I, I have a son um, who graduated from Virginia Tech with an information technology degree one year out of college. And the money he's making, what they offer him, so I'm going to go and try to recruit him and say, why don't you come in the FBI? And you look at the money. And, mm, but you know what? People are giving up. Most of the agents that are going into class now in the, with the IT background are taking salary cuts. Huh. It's, it's, it's amazing to come into the FBI, and I'm sure our other partners, uh, Secret Service, everyone else, are seeing uh, people, the, the desire for service to their country, I think, is overwhelming somewhat, mm -hmm. that, that pay thing. But that, that's one of the biggest issues. Uh, you know, uh, companies are paying for information technology 
graduates uh, to deal with the security issues in the financial institutions. Right, it's in amazing. Spaces. Oh, yeah. yeah, I see what you mean. But it's nice. It's a great way to serve the country as well. Oh, yeah. sure. And, and I think the pay scales, uh, you know, you come out, uh, the FBI is an agent, you're probably making close to $60,000 a year. Well, that could be very good in western New York, but mm -hmm. in the New York City, you know, there, there's not, yeah. you know, you, you're making the same, there's some incentives for cost of living, but uh, it's a sacrifice. And, and the men and women that are in the FBI and in law enforcement make a huge sacrifice monetarily, but, you know, there is no better job, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Oh, that's know? great. When oh, you, like to, you, you wake up every morning and you look forward to going to work, it's something different. So, oh, it's uh, wonderful to hear, because there's no, so yeah. many people that hate their jobs, and it's just right. great to hear that. And I, I'm amazed by the talent, uh, especially here in Rochester. We have some new agents that have just come in that are information technology people and they're dealing with these cyber issues and the, and the frauds and yeah. I, I'm amazed by their talent. It's scary. You know, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I need to get a little bit up to speed when I get briefings. Uh, I kind of uh -huh. get that glazed look. You know. I see. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so if one wants to get involved and find out more about the FBI and information in terms of what's happening out there, things to avoid, or even look at what job opportunities they are, just go to the website. Sure, the website, the FBI.gov. Okay, um, FBI.gov. We'll give you pretty much everything uh, except our national security secrets, I would hope. Okay, but, uh, <laughs> I hope it, not. They, right. they will give you a lot of those uh, questions can be answered there. I see, okay, and then the phone number locally is 546-2220. Yes, that's They have an issue yeah. to talk mm -hmm. to. So that's great. Um, I, you know, it, it's it's so big of an issue, and there's so many things to talk about. I have to bring you in for another program <laughs> in the future because there's so many things that uh, we haven't even touched upon. And you know, the one issue of, like I said, identity fraud is just a very small slice Everywhere. of sure. the big picture. But the key is to just kind of be in the lookout, try to get involved in reporting any situations that may be sure. uh, involving cyber. People crime. need to be smart. They mm -hmm. need to be realistic, and of course, criminals will prey on those that are not smart uh, or those that don't have the ability. We see a lot of that, too, with our elderly, mm -hmm. um, tele telecommunications fraud, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. When you get the computer, it's a whole different world. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So there's a certain population that need to protect themselves because they tend to be more vulnerable exactly. with these kinds of issues. Exactly. So, yeah, that's great. So key is people get involved, hook up to the website of FBI.gov, sure. contact if there's a big case that might be going on or just make a call to the Rochester and if office. The, and if they're a victim of internet fraud, yes. it's the IC3. Dot gov. IC3 you dot can gov. report that over the internet, which okay. is kind of interesting. You get victimized by it and report it by the internet. But okay. that's where we tell people send the information so they can coordinate it. Sure, and see if there's a trend that's going on. Exactly. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mm -hmm. Harris. It's Wonderful. Amazing. Thank you very much. So, so our, our guest today was a um, special agent in charge, uh, P Mr. Peter Ahern from the Buffalo office in charge of the Western New York FBI agency here. Um, and I would like to thank you very much and thank our audience today for tuning in. And until next time, my name is Nanette Nokon. And if you have any comments or concerns, please email me at nnocon at aol.com. Thank you, and until next time.